Welcome to the world of scale modeling with Mike Ashey, where techniques, tips, and creativity come alive with dozens of tutorials, projects, tape-up reviews, and picture references to help you build better scale models and enjoy our wonderful hobby. Welcome to the tape-up review of the HK Models 148 scale B17G. In this review, we'll go over all the main interior components, how they fit together, how the fuselage parts fit together, how the wings fit together, and how the wings fit onto the fuselage. So, let's get started. I've got the main interior parts taped together, and they seem to fit fairly well, except for two pieces, and I'll show you them in a second. A lot of parts in here and these are just the bulkheads and the floors this part which is the walkway for the aft part of the fuselage which goes here it doesn't fit very well you've got to trim it <clears throat> and this piece for the tail gun, what you're going to have to do is insert it into the tail. And uh, what I would do was would be to put some testers glue. I really can't see it very well. There's like a ledge in here that <clears throat> this sits on. And I put some testers glue on there. Uh, in order to get it to, to sit correctly because it's going to be really really hard to do if you glue half of this on here and then attempt to do it and you can't push it through this way because see it gets it, there the obstructions are right here so it's got to be uh, through here and you're just going to have to be diligent about the placement of it and again, I would use some testers glue in here so that you can, um, here, let me, uh, let me go ahead and I'll show you the ledge I'm talking about here. I can go ahead and retape these later. Uh, it's uh, this ledge right here. So you need to put some testers glue on that on both sides after this is glued together. And then um, it'll sit correctly. So we'll go ahead and put this on the side. And of course, the forward part of the fuselage is a separate piece. And I'll show you how this fits uh, onto the forward nose piece here as soon as I get this all taped up. And of course, you've got the upper part of the fuselage which fits on here so once I get the other side of the fuselage taped on then um, we'll see how everything fits together but um, the one comment I have is you're gonna have a lot of seam work um, because you've got I've broken this four times and I just broke it again <laughs> um, you've got this seam here, you've got these seams here, aside from the seam where the fuselage splits, and then you've got this seam back here. So you've got a lot of seam work to do, and you need to be careful not to do what I did, which is to break these actuators for the Bombay doors, which I've done twice now. And I got to put some super glue on that. So, <clears throat> um, again, everything fits together except for what I showed you the catwalks. And um, it's got some nice interior detail. And the forward hatch and the door here are separate parts. They didn't put the tail gun hatch as a separate part. Um, and, and, and I'll show you this a little later. 
I checked the fit of the cockpit glass and it's real tight and the two upper pieces of glass also fit nice and tight. So uh, I haven't checked this one and this one but I suspect they're probably the same, nice and tight. And I checked the nose glass and it was fairly tight. So <clears throat> let me go ahead and uh, fix that piece there and go ahead and uh, tape it up and then uh, we'll see how it looks. Oh, one more thing. The tail wheel, um, I've got a lot of tape on this because the, the axle for the tail wheel is a lot thinner than the hole so you're going to have to put some shims in there. Uh, this fits fairly well inside here and it is fairly tight um, but you're you're gonna have to like I said um, you're gonna have to put some shims on this tail wheel otherwise it's just gonna break off on you so um, with that said we'll go ahead and uh, button up the main part of the fuselage and I'll show you how that fit is and then we'll put the nose and the nose piece on and the tail piece on I'll show you how that is and then we'll put the top on. With the uh, other side of the fuselage taped together, the, the seams and fit is fairly tight. Some of this is just the tape moving. <clears throat> the only place I saw that will be an issue is back here. And I think if you just do that, when you're gluing it, if you use super glue, it'll make it nice and tight. Same thing along here. It's just the uh, fuselage is not exactly contoured. It's off by tiny amounts, but um, fits pretty good. So we'll go ahead and uh, put the forward and aft parts on. Hopefully if I don't break the bomb bay door actuators again we'll see how that looks and then we'll put the top on. I've got the nose and tail taped on and uh, the fit is fairly good. You're still going to have to do some seam work. And here's the nose. I've got still photography too that I'll show you that uh, give you a better idea of the fit. But um, some of the tape's coming loose, but it's you're going to have to work with these seams and then restore the uh, petite engraved panel lines. The panel lines match up quite nicely, but um, the seam work's going to be a challenge. So. Let's do the top and see how that looks. I've got the top part of the fuselage taped on and here again, you're, no matter how tight you make this, you're going to have to do some seam work all around its perimeter. So the model's got some beautiful surface detail and you're going to lose some of it <clears throat> when you uh, work on these seams. Most of it you can restore, but um, you're just going to have to go slow and be very, very diligent how you do that seam work. So I'll get a, a close up here. Now we'll uh, turn our attention to the main wings and the, and the uh, horizontal stabilizers and the elevators and. Uh, I'll show you what that looks like. I've got one of the main wings completely assembled and the fit is pretty good. There are some tweaks that uh, you're going to need to do and I'll show you those on the unbuilt one. The wheels are going to need, the uh, landing gear itself is going to need some shims where it attaches to the uh, framing here. <clears throat> but. Um, Everything else fits in place fairly well. These pieces 
are specifically keyed for a specific location on the wing so make sure you mark them and be careful where they go and uh, you can see the keys on the underside here and I'll, I'll sh again I'll show you this on the on the unassembled one but they they tend to rock a little bit so I would use some testers glue on the back side here and uh, so that you have a little bit of working time and then uh, you can get them properly positioned the other thing that I would do is um, these engines just don't look real good and so what I would do is replace them with these resin 2 detail engines that are complete with the wiring I use these on my monogram B17 G build monogram Revell 148 scale B17 G build and um, they really look good once they're painted so this is a heck of a lot better than this and a lot more accurate too so uh, that's the one recommendation that I would make uh, aside from using the two-part brass barrels on this kit and those are really the only two things that you're going to need to do other than that um, there's a lot of detail here the flaps are separate um, there are some mold punch outs here so what I recommend you do is just open them up slightly so that uh, you don't see the mold punch outs because trying to get rid of them is going to be really really hard to do and I don't think it's worth the time so um, but yeah the fits pretty good now the, the landing gear interior they really did a nice job on it <clears throat> much better than the monogram reveal kit but most of it you're not going to see why because 99 percent of the time the wing attached to the fuselage is going to be like this so um but yeah everything um buttons up fairly well um the Flaps are a little loose, but once you glue everything together, it'll look pretty good. These intakes, these two intakes right here, have some photo etch grading covers go on them. I'm not sure how well they fit together, but um, you're going to have to be very, very careful how you place them on there. Otherwise, it's going to look not so good. So uh, be careful how you do it. I would use some slow set super glue so you have a little bit of working time to straighten them out so let me set this aside now <clears throat> on the wings the instructions tell you to slip these two pieces in place after the wings are glued together but they don't fit so I recommend that you glue them in place before you close up the wings and you need to be diligent uh, each one of these is a precise fit for its location so uh, don't mix them up and don't reverse them otherwise they won't look right the other thing is these pieces here are, are necessary to get everything centered together because that key right there keys in with that notch on either side depending on the specific number that goes with the specific engine to sell <clears throat> so um, need to be mindful of that the landing gear interior and I've got um, front back bottom and and the sides glued together I lift this side off so I could go ahead and uh, airbrush it and uh, weatherize it when I get to building this kit but uh, it buttons up pretty well and fits together fairly well. So um, that's going to make a liar out of me here. There we go. And uh, so, yeah, there's a lot of nice detail on the inside of here. So <clears throat> that's how I would do it. I would glue all these sides together, airbrush it, prime it, airbrush it, weather it, and then uh, button this side up 
and um, it fits nicely inside its opening. Right like that. Now, uh, the other thing I forgot to mention is that this side piece is a separate insert right here. And so you're going to have some seam work to do here. It's not an exact fit. It's close, but not exact. So you need to be mindful of that. So <clears throat> with that, we'll go ahead and assemble this other wing, button it up, and attach them to the fuselage, see how they look. The tails are just two-piece assemblies, the horizontal stabilizers, and um, they fit together fairly well. My tape's uh, slipping again. Um, and we'll look at the seams uh, between the edges here and the fuselage. So um, again, I need to assemble this one and here's what it looks like with the propellers which slip right on here. But I think it would look a lot better with that. So let's uh, go ahead and uh, assemble this wing and uh, See how everything looks. There's a second thing that I forgot to mention. These pieces are supposed to slide right on here, but they don't. And what you need to do is, you can see where I've thinned this out a little bit on both sides here and here and I've made this curve this half circle a little bit bigger and um, to get these to slip on correctly otherwise they they're just too tight and they won't they won't sit down all the way like they're supposed to so uh, just be mindful of that and you'll you'll see that as soon as you try to put them in place so go ahead and just thin out these areas and uh, save yourself a lot of time. I had mentioned earlier that the cockpit glass, two small ones on the upper side and the cockpit glass itself were excellent fits and uh, really nicely done. Very tight, much better than the monogram Revell parts which required a lot of tweaking. And the same thing for the forward nose glass. Nicely done and very tight. And I haven't checked the others, but I suspect that they'll be the same, nice and tight. The other thing is that all of these are put from the outside, which is nice. So that saves you the uh, uh, the uh, opportunity not to mar the glass while you're working on the seams. So, uh, yeah, looks good. So, let's uh, go ahead and look at some still photography. The profile on this kit looks pretty sharp. Having just completed the build on the monogram B17G of the same scale, I noticed there are some dimensional differences between the kits. The fuselage on the HK kit is a bit wider than the monogram or the Revell kit. The wings are a bit thicker than the monogram or the Revell kit, and the engine nacelles are slightly larger. The landing gear on the HK kit is also a bit longer than on the monogram kit or the Revell kit. So the completed HK kit is going to sit just a little bit higher. And for all of you that are into model art, you're going to love the petite recessed panel lines and the petite recessed rivets.
All the cockpit glass has a really tight fit and there are no voids around the perimeter of any of these parts. The nose glass is also well done and a very tight fit around the perimeter of the forward fuselage. The attachment of both the port and starboard main wings to the fuselage is remarkably tight. In fact, you may not even need to do any seam work here. The undersides of the main wings also have a really tight fit to the fuselage. The elevators and their associated wings are a really tight fit on the aft part of the fuselage. On the underside, you've got a little bit more seam work than on the top, but it's a really minimal amount. HK did a really good job on both the main wing and these smaller parts and their attachment to the fuselage. The fit of the main fuselage halves is very tight and all the recessed panel lines line up on both sides of the fuselage. As we work our way down to the aft portion of the fuselage, you can see all of this detail, how everything lines up, and the fact that the fuselage halves are nice and tight. The aft part of the fuselage is a separate part. The halves fit together fairly tightly, but where they connect to the main part of the fuselage is going to take a little bit of work to get the seam connection point to disappear. The nose of the fuselage is also a separate part, and while the halves fit together nice and tight, here again you're going to have to do some work to get the seam connection point between the forward part of the fuselage and the main part of the fuselage to disappear. As we work our way down the fuselage to the tail, you can see that pushing the halves together, and here of course my tape started to slip on me, but the parts of the fuselage fit together very tight, so the seam work will be minimal on the upper side, just like on the bottom. The upper fuselage area on the HK kits is also a separate part. The interior bulkheads don't interfere with the placement of this part onto the fuselage. And so, as I've demonstrated with my fingers, pushing against the fuselage from the top down will help close these gaps on both the port and starboard side of the fuselage. And with the gap closed, just touch one small area with a tiny drop of super glue along the seam line in order to secure it in place. Work on one side at a time, and about every inch, drop a tiny bead of medium set super glue, and then do the other side. This will close this seam and minimize your seam work. The main wings have some really nice surface detail on both the upper and the lower areas. The exhaust and the superchargers on all four engines are also separate parts and they fit into their locations nice and tight. Thanks for watching the tape up review with the HK models 148 scale B17G. Their F model is also assembled the same way as the G model, except of course the forward nose section doesn't have the chin turret. With that, have a great evening and stay tuned for the surfer skin video of an actual B17G. Thanks for watching and don't forget to subscribe to our channel and give us a thumbs up. And when you get the chance, visit our website at www.mikeashy.com where you're going to find dozens of free PDF downloads, including tutorials, picture references, model galleries, projects, and my five original scale modeling books. Thanks to Ben Sound and Vidivo for the royalty-free music, and happy scale modeling!